City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Welcome back. This is uh, going to be a little bit different. Usually I'm making clothing and it is very hot and sticky outside. I got my hair pulled up. I just got done mowing the lawn a little bit ago and uh, yeah, sticky day. I want to make a bag. This is a sling bag, you know, kind of like a backpack kind of bag. So the weight's on your shoulder up here because I need something that I can carry my big water bottle with me, you know, stay hydrated or die kind of thing. And so carrying that bottle in a, a bag I'm carrying on my arm just isn't cutting it for me. It's too heavy. So I'm going to be making one of these. And this has two different options. From what I can tell, it's just size. One is a few inches taller than the other one. So I'm making the taller one. And the other option is they have where you can use two different colors on the outside for pocket contrast. Um, and I'm going to be just using the same color on the outside. It wants you to use a heavier uh, fabric, kind of like a home deck fabric for the outside. And you know, I love my home deck. And I actually have this leftover, which is that home deck velour that I made a coat out of last winter. And so I'm going to be using this black velvety look, or green, sorry, this is green, velvety looking fabric for my outside. And I'm going to be lining it with this because I have a big scrap of this dress that I just made a little bit ago and it's 100% cotton. And I think that that's going to be kind of cute, you know, with that, make it lively and pretty. Um, this does have a couple little pockets with side zippers in it and what I'm using for that is I have a couple zippers that I had you know pulled off of some discarded purses and it had this little outside piece it's just vinyl but I've been saving it for something you know where the zipper goes inside I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or not we'll see so I got two little zippers and then for over the top, it calls for two zippers that meet in the middle, two nine inch zippers. I don't have two matching nine inch zippers, but I have one longer zipper. So instead of my zippers, you know, two of them meeting together at the top, I'm just gonna have one that goes all the way over. I don't think that's a big deal. So, you know, we're gonna be using that. And that's it. So this is gonna be a little bit different. Hope you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera down and get started. Okay, so the first thing that I see here, and yes, I've already cut it out, you know. I did that before I decided to film this, so there you go. But it, it says that everything is a half inch seam allowance. For clothing, it's usually 5 eighths. So I'm gonna to need to make sure I remember to not use 5 eighths, to use one half. And they do want you to interface, um, it looks like, well here, let me show you, on the outside pieces and the inside pieces, like on here, they're asking you to cut two pieces of interfacing, one of lining and one of fabric, okay? My home deck fabric is pretty darn stable. It's got a bonding on the back. It's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna skip the interfacing on my velvet. I will be interfacing these pieces. Okay, so when we get to that point and you say, hey, the pattern calls for it on that too, I'm just, I don't think that this fabric needs it, you know. So the very first thing 
that they want you to do is actually do that interfacing on pieces one and two, which are big outside pieces, and piece six, which is this strappy part there. So let me go ahead and get the interfacing. I'm going to use a heavier one this time, um, you know, just for extra support. Okay, this is what I'm going to be using. It says featherweight. It's honestly a lot more of like a medium crisp weight to me than featherweight, but that's what they call it. So this is what I'm going to go ahead and cut pieces out of the front, the back, and that little strap part and iron it on. You don't need to see that. Um, just trust me, next time you see these pieces, they'll be all ready to go. I do want to point out the strap part I did cut out of the velvet. The only reason I'm interfacing it is because that part is going to get a whole lot of grabbing, you know, and I want it to be able to pop back out into its original size. So yeah, this piece, this piece, even though it's velvet, I am interfacing it. Um, but the other two big outside pieces, I am not. Okay, so I have my pieces that need to be interfaced, interfaced. I'm just going to set it aside, you know, I'll trim it closer when need be. And I just looked through the directions and what it looks like is you're going to do all of the, you know, technical stuff with the outside bag, get it done, except for the top zipper, then make the lining for it, kind of like a sack but leave some of the bottom open so you can turn things and then just layer the lining into the completed outer bag, put the zipper in, flip the lining inside out, and that's a general idea of how it looks like they want you to do this. But there is a whole lot of things I'm gonna need to mark. All of these little things here, this is where the zipper to open it's gonna go. This is a pocket zipper. This is a pocket placement here. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of things with my hole punch. Love this deal. So make sure, making sure. Um, yeah, okay, I was just thinking, this is the wrong side of this fabric. And I'm actually, I am gonna mark it on the wrong side. I think it'll be easier to do that. So I'm just gonna punch out all of my little holes. The notches I will be clipping into the fabric. Um, they're not very deep. Let me go ahead and get these circles punched, this marked, and all of the little holes and corners and everywhere punched out first, and then we'll start marking and drawing lines. Okay, I pretty much have all of the little holes that I'm going to punch punched out. Again, making sure you use leather underneath your tissue paper, you know, so you don't want to punch all the way through your paper. So like on these slashes here, what I am doing is I am marking where the bottom corners of it are. Up at the top here, I'm just going to clip where those two slash marks are. And then I should be able to open this up and play connect the dots with my little slash mark and the dot I drew down there. And And it's, it's showing up on the wrong side. I can't really use it very well on the right side of the velvet, you know, but on this side I can. Really? Can you see that? Where I'm drawing the, from here, this is my little slash mark, connecting it down here and back up. I'm going to do the same thing over here with this mark. With this one, you just do the top dots, bottom dots, and then connect the dots that way. I'm not drawing the center line because that's to cut it with and you can pretty much, you know, tell what is the center of two slash marks. Well, I almost got done and realized that I'm marking it wrong. Um, since I'm marking it on the wrong side, I need to flip my pattern paper over so it's upside down. And I did not do that and this is not a symmetrical design. Um, the outside is, but this stuff in the middle here is not this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead to my ironing board, iron this so it will disappear, and then come back and, you know, since I'm marking the wrong side, make sure my pattern is upside down and remark that middle and I'll be back. Okay, 
So now that I have it all marked, what I need to do is go to my sewing machine and stitch along all of these lines to reinforce it um, because this where zipper goes, they need to be reinforced before you clip to open everything. So all the way around here, this line here, I do not need to stitch that. That's just so I know where to place a pocket later. Um, now on their instructions, the center pocket area, it's, they have it kind of marked, but it's a whole lot lighter than the rest of the markings. But I'm assuming since we're going to be putting a zipper in it too, that we're supposed to be um, doing the same reinforcement. You know, it makes sense to me. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I am using Juliet today. I haven't used her in a while. So let me go over to the machine and I'll show you how I work this. And I'm going to be using Juliet today. She's my sweet little Singer 99 from, I believe, 1923. Love her. Um, I'm going to pick out a bobbin to fit in her little Class 66 size bobbin case, and we'll get started. Okay, so what I'm doing is just kind of following along where the line is. And I'm using a fairly close, smaller stitch just because that's the whole point, is to reinforce. And when I get up to the corner, leave my needle down, lift up, press her foot, and turn it, and then go to the next side. Okay, so that is it. I mean, just did that center, you know, totally enclosed zipper area. And I'll do the same things for the top zippers. I gotta tell you, she was making quite the little rattle. So I had to take her little face open. Poor Juliet had a screw loose, you know, as we all do sometimes. But now she's so much smoother and quieter. So I think that we're all gonna be a lot happier. This little, a little take up lever was banging on things. So yeah, all better now. Okay, what it says now, since I have it, this is the right side, you can see my stitching lines there. It says now I need to slash it. Slash along the solid line between the stitching lines at top edge. So to me, that means doing these three, but not doing this one, because it is not at the top edge. So basically I'm gonna be cutting halfway and then up to, but not through my stitching line, up here, and the same thing on these long ones, cutting down to, was that within about, within an eighth of an inch, I mean within a fourth of an inch-ish, and then clipping to those corners like so. Okay, can you see that? So I've clipped it up too, but not through my stitching line. So I should be able to open all of these up, you know, 100% flat. I need to still do this one. And then it looks like we're gonna be getting our other big piece, which is piece number two, and doing the same thing up here at the top, where you stitch down over and up to reinforce it, and then come and clip to those corners. Now on this piece, there is a stitching line here for another pocket, but it looks like they don't want you to do that until you're actually setting a pocket in. And so I might have messed that up when I was doing the other side. Um, I think that the reason that this was so light here is because they're showing you that it is there, but you're not actually making those reinforcement stitches yet. So, you know, live and learn. I've already done it on mine here, and you know, for my purposes, it's not gonna be a big deal, but if you're doing yours, don't do this center reinforcement seam yet. We'll deal with that later. So the same thing on this. It's not piece two. I guess piece two is for the shorter version. On me, it's piece eight. Um, I'm just gonna be doing this reinforcement stitching and marking all of these dots. And now I'm gonna go ahead and mark this on the back also. Again, since I'm marking it on the back of the fabric, I'm gonna flip it upside down, this pattern paper, okay? So I'm gonna mark it with my pen, but I'm just not gonna stitch it yet. 
Okay, so um, in addition to my stitching up here around that, on this piece, there's the two dots on the sides, and um, there's two dots on the sides on this piece too, but on this big piece that we did first, they don't tell you to stitch through there, okay? On this piece, what the instructions tell you to do, and you know, the picture's a little bit confusing because um, I actually stitched from the top dot to the bottom dot, but I guess what you're supposed to do is stitch. There's a top dot and a bottom dot here. I stitched between them. Okay, what they actually want you to do is stitch all the way through this bottom one and then keep going because you're going to clip here. I was thinking that you were going to clip in the middle, but no, you clip up to, but not through, this bottom dot right here. My fabric is so sturdy, I'm not going to stress about it, but I just wanted to point that out, you know, in case you're following along. So I'm going to clip up to this bottom dot. Okay, so it's like that on both sides. And up here I'm clipping up to the corners. Okay, so this is the wrong side here. There's the right side, so now those corners are going to open. Okay, so the next thing they want you to do is get this pocket. This is the outside pocket and there's going to be elastic in a casing up here at the top. And this fold line, when I measure it, it is three quarters of an inch, okay? There's dots down here. I'll mark those in just a minute. I want to deal with this up here at the top first. Um, what they want you to do is fold it three quarters of an inch like this, stitch it, make a casing, and then thread elastic through that. I am not a fan of threading elastic through a really small um, casing after the fact. You know, it's just a headache to me. So what I'm going to do is instead of quarter inch regular elastic, I'm going to use my little um, clear elastic stuff here. It's just a little bit narrower than four millimeters. But what I'm going to do is cut a piece that is longer than my than my pocket here, so I don't need to worry about it. And place it up in there, fold the casing over it so that when I go to stitch it, that elastic is already up there in the casing. And then once I get it stitched, then I can cinch it up to the size that I want it to be in the end. So to make sure that I get the right size, I'm going to see if I can mark this on the right side. I need to mark where three quarters of an inch is. Um, yeah, I can see that. I don't know if you can see, but see it's making a line there, so I can see that. So on the right side, marking my three quarter inch place here. And that way, when I turn it, I can pin it so it's exactly at that point. So let me go ahead and put my elastic in. And when I stitch it, I will, you know what, I'm just going to stitch it, you know, about an eighth of an inch from the edge because this stuff is not going to unravel. It's, it's bonded on the back, you know, so it will not unravel. So I'm just going to pin it like this with my elastic tucked up into the top up there and um, come through. Now, this edge is bigger on top than on the bottom, so there's probably going to be a little bit of smooshing it in and easing it as I go, but if there are some puckers there, that's okay. No one's going to know. It's going to be on the inside of a pocket. The outside's going to look fine, okay? So let me go ahead and get a couple more pins in here and go back to Juliet and get this stitched right along that edge. Okay, so the instructions want the elastic to be five inches when it is um, cut, you know, so that the fin, 
if I had a piece of elastic that was just cut off the roll, it would be five inches long and then sewed in here and stretched. So this is how I'm going to make sure my elastic turns out to be five inches. On my ruler here, this is where five inches is, okay? And that is right about here. So from that point to the edge is three inches, okay? So I'm just gonna make a little mark on my clear elastic there at the very edge, okay? And this side, when I was at the machine, I did a little stitch across the edge to hold that on. So this side is secure. I'm gonna pull this edge out until if I line, let's see here, I can line this up with a grid line here. I'm gonna pull this until it is three inches out. It's not gonna be an exact match because it's gonna be stretched. So maybe I'll go three and a half inches out. Right about there. Okay. And if I let it go, what do I have? Ooh, two and a half, I need to stretch it some more. All right, now what do I have? One, two, three inches exactly. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick a pin in it here and go back to my sewing machine, stitch it across there to lock it in, and then I can trim the excess off. And to me, that's a lot easier than trying to thread elastic through. I probably should have marked this before I cinched in the elastic, but I don't think it really matters. Again, with my pattern piece upside down, I am transferring these bottom circle marks over. Okay. All right, now back on my main piece here, there's a line down here for pocket placement. And what I do is I just got my ruler because this is velvet, so you know, it, it will mark. If I just push this down on that line really hard, now when I flip it over, I should be able to see it. And there it is, okay. So that is the seam line that I need to stitch my pocket onto. So where this dot is down here that I marked, okay, that point lines up with the seam line here there okay and then just slide it in there the top over here i'm going to move that elastic over this point half an inch in this way is lining up with that line also right about there that looks pretty good i think and now i'm going to pin it on and go back and stitch it. And this is gonna have the, oh, if I can get it to stitch, hang, to pin, hang on a second. Um, right about there. I'm saying right about because it's hard to see the back side while you're pinning it. Right about here and right about there, okay. So I'm gonna be sewing this at a half inch seam allowance, pretty much where this dot is, straight up the edge like this. Okay, that worked pretty good. So you can see my stitching line is pretty darn good compared to the uh, marked line that I have on there. So now I'm gonna flip my pocket over and line up the bottom here. Hi, you know what, I'm gonna go get some clips instead of pins, I'll be right back. These are gonna be a lot easier to use on this very thick fabric. Okay, so let me clip this bottom edge here. Very thick, and up the side here. And it looks like what they want you to do is baste it. I'm gonna just use the longest stitch that Juliet has, which is honestly not terribly long, but I'm just gonna use that and machine baste it down here and over. The velour being what it is, it moved on me while I was stitching it, so I'm not exactly matching on my edges, but I don't think that's gonna make a big difference because my final seam that's gonna join, you know, this with the other, is gonna be half an inch in and that's gonna be plenty 
to be able to, you know, encase all of that stuff. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, what they want you to do right now, though, is to, I'm going to go back to the machine, and they want you to put a machine stay stitch all the way across the bottom to keep it from stretching. Okay, so there's my stay stitching. I need to take a break, go downstairs and take care of a few things, but when I come back, I think we're going to get started working on this pocket that goes right here. Okay, I am back and we're going to work on a pocket here. So I'm using pocket piece number four and I need to mark where the stitching line is. So once again, I am going to get my piece of leather underneath here and I'm only marking one of them and according to the instructions um, it's going to be one that's going to be sewed on this way so I'm just going to choose this top one here I think that they're the same top and bottom so you know it doesn't really matter terribly but so here we go I'm gonna put my little pattern on top here and I'm just going to mark where these um, points are. I'm not actually going to draw the lines this time. Um, no, I changed my mind. I am because I am going to be stitching this and it's kind of hard to see. It's very hard to see actually. Okay, so let me go ahead and get these drawn because just the little dot by itself was really blending into the fabric. So straight lines are going to help me out here. Now I need to make sure that this pocket does not get in the way, so I'm going to try to push it over. I'm going to get a stick pin and put it through this top corner here and match it up with the top corner down here. This is the one I already stitched, you know, prematurely, but so be it. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. Put a straight pin in this corner, match it up with the corner down below and anchor that in and I'm just going to assume everything else is pretty much matched up. Maybe I'll do one halfway just to make sure it doesn't want to move. Okay, so now that I have my little rectangle drawn on there, if you can see my lines, okay, I'm going to go back over to my machine and stitch up and down all the way around this line so I have the whole rectangle anchoring both of these pieces together. I did not match up at all. The problem with this velveteen is when it you, when you go to push it down it kind of pushes down and over to the side. You know it's very nappy. So this little stitching line here is going to show, um, is it the end of the world? I don't think so, but you know what, I might go ahead and just pick that seam out really quick just so that it's not terribly obvious, so I will do that really quickly. Okay, got that seam out of there. I think that, you know, no one's ever going to know except for, you know, everyone watching. But other than that, what I need to do now is in the middle of the seam that I just made here, I'm going to slice it straight up the middle. And when I get to within about a quarter inch or so from the end, I'm going to make a couple little angled cuts up to those corners, but once again, not crossing the line of the threads. One up here and one here. Okay, so it looks like this, all right? Now what I need to do is fold everything to the other side. And it looks like they want you to pull it all the way through. Not like a welted, you know, a welted pocket or something like that. You'd have a nice little edge there. Oh no, they do not want that. They want it to go all the way through to the inside. And honestly, my green fabric is so thick, it really wants to stay exposed. I'm going to need to go over to my ironing board and press this very carefully so that it's going to stay open um, all the way around. I'm having a very 
pretty hard time keeping these wanting to stay open, but there's only so long I can keep that iron on it. So I've got my little wood block. Sorry, I didn't notice you were out of focus here. I've got my little wood block, my clapper, whatever you want to call it. And I can just continue to hold that on there and press it. Technically, I should do this until it is both completely dry and completely cool, but I don't know. That could take a while with all of this thickness. Okay, well, that's holding it a whole lot better, and uh, I think that that will work. This is what it's looking like on the outside. You can see a hint of the lining. That's okay. That doesn't bother me. All right, let me go take it back to the other side. I think we're going to put the zipper in next, I hope. Okay, now in the instructions, what they had asked you for is two seven-inch zippers. And then they ask you to shorten it to make a six inch zipper out of it. Well, my zippers that I, you know, salvaged from another purse years ago are six inches. They are already cut off. And when I cut them, um, they were kind of frayed at the end. So I just put a bunch of clear nail polish on there. So that's not going to unfray. So they are already tied together up here at the top um, so that it's like a zipper that opens this way. Okay, so if you have not salvaged a zipper like that, you're going to need to uh, shorten the bottom end, bind it off down here, and also whip stitch the tops together. Okay, but since that is done, I'm going to go ahead and put it in. So I'm going to place it right here. Um, let me turn it over this way. It might make it easier to see what I'm doing. And of course, this, like all zippers that I do, I am going to use my um, double-sided basting tape to get this placed how I want it before I start stitching. So now that I know that it's going to fit, I'm going to go ahead and pull my zipper out and put my tape on. Again, I think this is the Dritz brand tape, but there's, you know, all of them work fairly much the same way. They have a paper backing on them. And uh, I'm going to put the paper backing is exposed here. Just, whoopsie, hang on one sec. That was off center, obviously. Okay. So I got both rows of my basting tape on there. Put this aside and make sure they're on nice and tight. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull the paper backing off and slip it in here and just press it in place. Okay, so making sure my zipper is up, you know. I'm going to slide my little zipper underneath here and get it in place. Hang on, pull the little tab through here so that the tab is at the very top. Center the coils in my opening here. The hard part is trying to get it so I can get it pressed in here without getting the double-sided tape to stick on pieces I don't want it to first. Okay, I think that's pretty close. Um, I might give this lining a little tug to try to get one last time to get it situated out. Uh, hang on, let me pull this up one more time. Try to pull the lining out so it's not quite as visible. And pop it back down. Okay. Well, I think my zipper is fairly centered in there. I need to go and um, switch out the feet on my sewing machines, something that's closer to a zipper foot. Um, I'm not going to be like right on top of the coils, but I am going to be edge stitching it um, at the edge of my green all the way around. So when I'm sewing up here, I can just lower the zipper enough that I can get around here and then raise it back up as I go past it. Actually, I'm just using the old school traditional Singer 
foot and it has this tiny little pinky toe on it and that is that little pinky toe is small enough that I can use it as a guide and I don't even really need to use a zipper foot on this part here so I can just go edge stitching it whoopsie over the coils it gets a little bit okay let me this, the way I backstitch on here, because it doesn't have reverse, is I just lift it up and move it back a couple stitches. So this is what it's looking like from the front. And it unzips and zips well. If I flip it over, this is what it looks like on the back. The important thing is when you're sewing it on, you want to make sure that this stays nice and open, you know, that they're not folded in on itself and that this pocket is not getting caught anywhere in there. But I think that that's going to work pretty good. I need to clip this little thread off here. And uh, so now going back to the table, we're going to sew the back part of this pocket on. Okay, so now it wants me to use piece number five for the back. So here's the thing. Piece number four which is the pocket front and piece number five which is the pocket back are exactly the same size pieces i think that the only difference is that piece number four they have this marking on it for your zipper so there you go i am just going to grab this piece that is already here and place it on top of my piece number four that is sewed on and I had to carefully pin it and then we're going to stitch this together uh, while it is attached like this. So let me get it pinned first. Trying carefully to match my edges because we got some three-dimensional stuff going on here. Okay, I know it looks like a porcupine and that I have really gone overboard with pinning it, but I just want to make really sure that everything stays together because especially over in this area, it's going to want to shift away. So I think the way I'm going to stitch this is kind of like sew this. Well, you know what? I think it'll be easier to do it from this direction actually so that I can stitch this way get to this corner, leave the needle down, flip everything up, and then come this way, and then move everything that way. You know what I mean? So let me go ahead and get started on the machine up here. And again, this is supposed to be a half inch seam allowance. So that's, that's our goal. If it's not exact, that's okay. Okay, so my pocket is in, and is it big enough for my phone? No. No, I can't get my phone in there. I can get my keys in there, though. So I'll just throw my phone in this pocket there. That's going to work okay. Alrighty. So this is what it looks like on the inside here. Okay, all is good there. Now I do have another zipper because there is another pocket. If I can find it up here somewhere. Nope, that's Here it is. My other zipper, this one, does not have that same big leather pull. You know, but I'm going to be putting this one more on the back side and my one, this one should be more on the front side, I'm thinking. So, um, or I might have that totally wrong. I don't even know. But either way, one's going to have the leather pull, one is not, but they're the same color. So I think that that's okay. So I'm going to set this piece here aside and get my narrower piece here. This is the one that we did the little side clips on here. And I need to mark this marking here on one of these pocket pieces. So you've seen how I do that before. Let me do that off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got it marked on here. You can kind of see my big rectangle. Now I need to mark where these four dots are and I'm marking it on the right side of my velvet so my pattern is right side up. Uh, every time I push down this wants to move over. It's such tricky fabric. Okay, so I'm just going to put a few little dots here. Hopefully they will show. Well, I can see them. There's one, two, three, four. 
So let me go ahead and pin this on the same way. I'm going to stick a pin through this dot, this corner right here, and it's down in the same corner down here. And the same thing, the bottom right corner to the bottom right corner. Get those pressed in all the way. This side looks pretty stable, so I'm just going to go ahead and anchor these pins straight across. I can tell as soon as I push down on it that everything is kind of shifting that way about an eighth of an inch. That's just the way the nap on this thing is. I honestly don't think it's going to make much of a difference as long as I have it somewhat straight over here. And so, um, I just need to move this side over. That is the trickiest part with this fabric is it just it wants to move things on me. Okay. All right, so once again, I'm going to go over to my machine and stitch all the way around this rectangle. Can you see my little rectangular stitches there? You might be able to see it better on this side. I'm going to go ahead just like last time and cut this open up to within about a quarter inch of the end and then hit it diagonally just like last time to open up to those corners. Do the same thing here and exactly like last time I'm going to flip it inside out and press it. Put this zipper on exactly like you know last time with the head of the zipper the, up here at the top near this little cutout part. So you don't need to see that twice. I'm going to do it exactly like the other one. So the back of the pocket on and everything. So um, next time you see me, I'm going to have the zipper and the pocket fully put on to my little back piece here. Okay, so we're getting to the point where I need to dig into my random bin of things I have salvaged from old belts and purses. And this pattern calls for a strap that has a little clip on the bottom and is just sewn straight into the top. So I have three straps that I have pulled off of discarded purses that would fit the requirements of having a swivelly hook at the end and, um, you know, these two have an adjustable part. This is these. This has the slider. Um, they're all vinyl, different grades of vinyl. I think because my zippers are a lighter color, I think I'm going to go with this lighter colored vinyl here. Um, so I'm going to put these two back into my bin. It, what it actually calls for is for you to make up your own, but honestly, Here's my tip. If you don't have all this stuff, go to the thrift store, look at their ugly purses, get a cheap one that has, you know, the strap, the zippers, all of the hardware. And, you know, for a dollar or two, get an ugly purse and just cannibalize all the parts that you're going to want from it, you know? So in addition to my strap, I'm going to need to put a couple little rings down here at the bottom that this can clip onto. Okay. So I have some plastic D rings, but I don't really want to clip this onto a plastic ring. So I'm going to find something else, probably something metal that I can clip it onto. I have these rings. They're not D's. They're circles. They look like old metal. I think they're like a metal coating of a plastic, but they'll look a lot more the part than the plain white plastic ones. So that is what I am going to be using. Um, I need to get a little strap and put one of these onto each side of my strap. This is way too long for what I need. So I am going to cut the end off here save this for another day and use these end pieces to make straps. You know what? That's still very thick. Um, 
Let me see, if they give you a size they want you to cut this little strap out of. It says cut two four inch pieces from one inch webbing. Okay, well let me just cut this into a four inch piece. And it is two layers. I'm gonna separate these layers. You know, I don't need that double thickness. I'm just gonna separate them um, and make each layer a little tab. So let me get these pulled apart really quick and I will be right back. Alrighty, so I've got them separated into two sides here. This thickness is much better. So keeping these little sides tucked in like that. Put it through my little loop and just stick a clip at the end here and where this little bottom slash is these are going to be placed just above that okay so I'm going to do the same thing over here and I'm beginning to wonder if my sweet little Juliet is going to be strong enough to go through all of this thickness. It's not that it's that heavy duty, but it's extremely thick over here. Um, like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this back over to the machine and try to stitch these on at about a quarter inch, just, you know, with a very wide stitch to hold it in place so that it will be ready for our next step. She actually handled that very easily, so I will not guess her limitations again. Um, all right, so it looks like we are ready to start attaching this part to our little strap pieces. These are the ones that I did interface over here. Um, you know, up here at the very toe, there's an opening or two dots. Those two dots is where this is going to go. I need to measure this and make sure I have it at the right length first before I attach it because right now it's very long. Okay, I'm still looking at this little clip here and it's like there's this part that's going to be clipped to the bottom and the top of this strap is just sewn into this top piece. But it looks like that's sewn onto one side of my top and on the other side of my top there'll be a little point here and that that is where they want you to sew a clip that's going to clip onto the back side of this. I'm guessing just to hold it together and keep this from flapping, I'm guessing, because the zipper is going to close it. You know, if the zipper is closing it, um, I'm still, I just, I just don't like, I don't want to have another hook right there and I don't think it's going to go with this. What I'm wondering is if where these two points come together, you know, one has the strap attached to it, one they want you to put this on. Why couldn't I just put a big snap or something at that point just to hold it together afterwards? You know, because in all of these pictures they don't show it. They're just showing the back part and the back part is what's going to be exposed. Well, I will figure that out shortly. What I'm going to do right now is go ahead and sew my strap on. In the instructions they say cut this piece to be 26 inches. So that's what I have. 10 inches here, 10 inches back, plus 6 inches up there. This is adjustable so I can move it around. And just like I did right here, I'm just going to go ahead and um, have Juliet stitch right across here just to hold this in place so I can go to the next step. With that stitched on, I'm going to go ahead and put the other side on here. I need to clip it all together and stitch it all the way around with a half inch seam allowance. Uh, leaving this side open, of course, because that's where this thing is hanging out. So down here, all the way around, and back up to here. Okay, so I've got it sewed. I ran out of bobbin, and then I re realized I was using a bobbin that had come with another machine. You know, a lot of times I get bobbins in drawers and things of machines. I thought it was one that I had done. And I got halfway through, and my bobbin wigged out, and I opened it up, and there was another color. It's like... 
What the heck? There's a whole nother color. It was one of those old bobbins where they keep wrapping different colors on top of each other. So, you know, we make do. Um, but I need to trim this edge off up here because this is incredibly thick fabric and around this curve I need it a lot narrower not so much at the top I think that's okay but around here um, and I need to somehow pull this thing right side out now so between the thick, thick fabric and the thick interfacing. I'm just gonna try to do a little tug and a little smush and everything. And I will be back when I have it all turned right side out. Okay, so I've got it pulled through. I need to somehow flatten this whole thing out nicely and iron it so that it holds a nice oval looking shape. And I think the easiest way is to just start up here at the top and, you know, undo it the best I can all the way down. So let me go ahead to the ironing board and take care of that. Okay, so this is what I have decided. I have decided I am going to do a second clip, um, but instead of using the little plasticky clips here, since I have one that matches this, that I cut off the other end, I'm going to use this clip. And um, what they're going to have you do is sew one end of it to this piece and the other end of it, uh, way down here, it's going to get sewed onto uh, this piece. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I am going to put the clip part on the fabric down here and a ring just like these rings I'm going to put onto the strap part up here. So I'm going to need to, this is the piece of strap that I cut off. They say to cut a piece five inches long which I will do but again I am going to separate these to single layers before I put my little ring on there. So I took my little strip of five inch long and flipped one end over under my ring here and then I tie it it was thick. The stuff it wants to move because you know it's just vinyl opened up like that. So on this side I did clip it to get some bulk out. Um, I just sewed it over just so it has a nicer edge down there at the bottom. Is this anywhere near perfect? No, absolutely not. But I think it will do, you know. From the outside it's going to look okay. I could have used a matching thread, but I have chosen not to. So I need to get my piece here. Now, according to their picture, if I lay this so that it is upside down like this, so my adjustable belt is down and come up here and I place this so that the buckle or the loop is going towards the open part and there is probably a line on here. Let me see. Here it is. See the square? That square says placement line. So that looks about right, right there. I'm going to go back to the machine one more time and just stitch it right about here. You know, I don't think this has to hold a whole lot of weight because it's just keeping the top clipped shut, but I think that's going to be okay. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So let me go ahead and stitch this on at the machine. Okay, so that is stitched on that way and on the back, well, you can see a little square, but it's not terrible. And that is going to be up like this. So this little clip is going to clip onto it like that is what I'm thinking. So I'll just need to, I'm going to take this strap off of the clip and I'll put a new strap on when I go to stitch it on and just make it the appropriate length so that this fits correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this off so that I'll be ready when it gets to that point. 
and it looks like we are way up here at step number 13. Okay. Okay, so it looks like I'm taking this piece here and I am going to fold it in half up here at the top and matching up these little, you know, where I stitched and notched and everything, that little cutout. I need to sew it across here, down this stitching line and over like a little step. All right, I made a total mess of it up here because this stuff, when you put two things together, two very nappy edges together and you push, they just, they don't want to go where you want them to go. They end up going cockeyed. So I'm not going to fight it. I just, you know, made it work. Yeah, trim off some of these edges. Make sure that I am clipped to the appropriate corner, you know. And let's see what happens out of curiosity when I turn it right side out, if this is going to work at all here. Um, I don't even know what it's supposed to look like, so... Oh! Okay, I was only supposed to stitch the top edge. I wasn't supposed to stitch this part. <sighs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pick these, this seam out here. So don't stitch this part. Just stitch, stitch the top one. I'm going to pull these out really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So I pulled that out and now it's matching the picture. So that is good. I am... Um, I need to get the end of my strap in and it looks like, okay, if they have it folded like this. All right, so this tab is facing up. I'm going to be pushing the end of my strap all the way up so it is kind of peeking out the little hole up here at the top. Okay, now I need to stitch straight across here, locking in all of this thickness. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just going to put a few rows of stitching on there because there's going to be a lot of strain right there. So I think a few rows of stitching would be a good idea. I pushed my sweet little Juliet over the brig, so I had to bring in the big guns here. Right now we have Yolanda back on deck because nothing's going to double cross her. Sweet little Juliet, she is like a 95 pound great grandmother, you know, who makes the best dumplings but you just don't want to push her too much. Yolanda, Yolanda is a roller derby queen with tattooed sleeves and she just takes no whatever from nobody. So, you know, in times like this, she is the girl for me. So I'm going to go ahead and use her for the rest of this project. All right, so I have several rows of stitching going across there. Um, I think that that's going to hold it. If I pull it out, this is what it looks like. You know, I think that's nice and strong, but I don't think we're supposed to undo it yet. So I'm going to put this back where it was. And um, so when I'm looking at it this way now, I have my strap here. This is still upside down, is it? Did I put this in wrong? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really think that it matters that much, but... Oh, you know what? I did. I did. What happened is I put this on the wrong side. Okay, so here's a hint. When you have your strap laying where it would be folded out like this, you should be able to see your adjustment buckle on the same side that this will be. Um, you know, I didn't. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not. You'll just, people will see the back of my buckle. But, you know, I could change it. I could, if I wanted to. Mm. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I think this is going to be fine. This will probably get twisted as I use it anyway, so I'm not going to stress about that. But if you're going to do it, you know, make sure instead of it looking this way, 
that it looks that way. Okay, enough said. Moving on. What I need to do now is uh, work on this part of the clip. So I just have my little piece, the other half of my piece, because remember I separated this five inch piece into two. It says it wants me to insert one end of the remaining piece of webbing through the remaining whatever, folding back one and a quarter inches, turn under a quarter inch, stitch across. Okay, so they want me to fold this down one and a quarter inches and then turn this under a quarter inch so I have one inch up here and stitch across there. Can you see all of this, how it wants to unfold? Okay. So what I'm going to do is at the one and a quarter inch point, which is right about here, just to make my life easier, I'm going to clip all of this interior part out. This is just, it's just a funky little vinyl. Um, it's going to be fine. Alright, so I have that part clipped out. Got my little hook put back on here. Folding it over at that point. Folding it under again. And now I feel like that's going to be better. Oh, I just don't like this. All right, let me show you what I did. I just cut a new piece off my little scrap five inches long and I trimmed off a layer, an inch and a quarter long, and I'm just gonna go like this. Yolanda is strong enough. She can sew through all of that. And I'm just gonna stitch that, hold it in place, and I will be back. All right, there you go. It is done, you know. I should have used the other one because it wasn't as thick, but that's okay. Now I'm getting this piece here. And they told us to clip these in step two. Remember that? Remember they told us to? Well, on their diagram here, it looks like they don't have their stitched open. <sighs> Whatever. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold. This is my big front piece that has the pocket and everything. So I'm folding it in half with our little cutout area here in this, the center fold. And putting these back up top where they were originally, even though they told us to clip them already. We're going to pretend that we didn't, I guess. I'm going to try to line up these edges and I need to stitch it straight across right up here. So what I'm seeing is that we're stitching this and they want it stitched all the way but since we already cut that I'm going to do it in two separate pieces. I'm going to stitch this together and then I'm going to stitch this together. Just because this stuff wants to be so finicky, um, I think if I tried to do it all in one shot, I would get this seam line totally messed up. So I'm going to stitch here at half an inch and here at half an inch, two separate pieces. And I am not going down here. I'm just going straight across so that this little cutout area here, that's open. Okay, so I'm putting this facing down because I believe that is what the instructions are saying and I am sliding it up through this little hole here and once it's peeking through I need to stitch it across here through all kinds of layers. So glad I have Power Girl out there. Stitch it across here several times um, and then I will be back. I got it on there, super thick, but it was so thick that Yolanda bent a needle going through it. So it's getting late. I think that's my cue to call it a night. So I'm going to leave this here and we'll start back up again tomorrow. Good morning. Welcome to the next day. So my next step is 
to join my front to my back. And as you can see, I started clipping it. I'm still really frustrated that they told us to slice this open in the first step when everything else has it's not sliced. So once again, I'm saying maybe don't slice this open. But you know, it's not like it's the end of the world because we can make it work. So what I need to do is join this part here from the bottom dot on this side just below the clip to on the side which has disappeared. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm just going to copy them from over here. There's two dots on the side here which is basically at a seam allowance up and then another inch or so above that. Okay, so from the, that position and the bottom dot lines up with the bottom of this tab. So there's about five or half inch, I should say half inch below that. And that's a lot of bulk. What I would also say is if you're going to do this, don't use a fabric as thick as I did. Um, you know, there's some thinner home decks and ones without all the nap and everything of this, but this is, um, this is harder to work with just because it is so thick. And, and if I had just, you know, used regular webbing um, instead of a strap, this wouldn't be so thick either. Okay. I had to change my battery because it died on me while I was talking. Um, and I have to laugh because I, before I started filming this, I took a little poll on my Facebook group of should I make this on a video because, you know, I usually do clothing. And everyone was extremely supportive and said, yes, yes, yes. And I just looked and there was one resounding, no. So I guess that person will not be watching this video, but everyone else that I asked in the group said yes. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. This is out of my comfort zone, but you know what? That's how we grow, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and go back to Yolanda and stitch it. I believe it's just from the dot. Um, yes, it looks like I need to leave this open below it. So just starting stitching at the dot here, coming up and around all the way. And because I did clip it ahead of time, you can see I'm just attaching the side edge of my clipped spot. and Just let this stay in the middle, you know unobtrusively so I can stitch around here and I'll be right back. Right, so I've got that stitched and that went relatively easily except this does not want to lay flat so my seam cut edges are not lining up but you know you're not going to be able to tell that from the outside so I'm calling it okay. Um, what I need to do now is sew this bottom edge. So remember just below where these little loopy straps are we had to clip that open right here okay so that is gonna give the, it the flexibility to move over and I need to go get my clips again hang on one sec so with my clips see on this side how I can kind of open that up because it's clipped like that just below the tab I'm going to clip together the side of this back piece, which was a little bit longer, to my front piece, which was wider. Okay, so turning it so that this edge here lines up with this edge there. And then I should be able to just go on and clip it all together and match up my bottom piece. Okay, now that I have it all clipped together, I'm going to go ahead and sew this right around here at, again, a half inch seam allowance. Right, so I had to kind of maneuver all of this under my presser foot to get those two seams to be able to start my needle right there, you know? And the same thing on this side to have this seam start there, but that's done now. So pretty much the outside part of the bag should be done. So let's see what it looks like here. That looks pretty good. Um, there's my little side pocket there, which looks pretty good. And I can tell that this looks a little long. 
All right, so I'm going to have to fix something right here. If I pull this up, this is way too long to clip onto this piece here. And this is also backwards. So I'm going to change a few things. First of all, before I even get started on the lining, I am going to open this up and I'm going to shorten it all the way down to here so it is just right there. And you know what? Because this is so thick and I don't like this strap anyway, I'm going to open this up, pull this strap out, and then just attach this little piece here straight onto the green velvet. So first, let me go ahead and pull this strap out here. And I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I've got this strap out. You know, we are wishing it a fond farewell. And what I did is I just cut a little piece of a, from a scrap here of this velour. And what I'm going to do, because this is a swivel, you know, I'm just going to use this as an attachment and stick it, the tail ends of it, coming right out the top right here, like that. Okay, so on this side, you can probably see it better. These are the little ends that I just pulled through. And I can feel that the edge of my hardware is right here. So I am going to try to stitch very close to that, straight across here. And that should lock it in so it just barely peeks out. Okay, so now let me see if I pull this back right side out. Ooh, I like that a lot better. Let's see how this matches up now. If these are both pulled up, this is still very, very low. I'm going to just cut it off actually because I'm going to need to make this strap a lot shorter. So if this is going to clip on here, second and I fold this strap here all the way up. I think that that is a whole lot closer. Okay so let me go ahead pull that off over here. I had this folded up all the way like this and you know what I'm going to just so it doesn't you know splay out on me trim some of this stuff out from behind. Fold it all the way down and I'm just going to stitch it right here to lock in that loop where I want it. This, this is the back here, okay? And what they want you to do is come around this way and clip it. And that means that this is all exposed right here. You know, so on the outside, you're going to see that. I thought that was going to be on the inside. But no, no, because this is the back of the piece, so it has to be coming around, you know, this way. So, I wish this looked a little bit prettier now. So, because now I know that this is on the outside in the exposed part, I want this to be a whole lot prettier. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this whole little strap off because I think that that is an ugly thing and probably just sew this loop onto here um, just with some pretty stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back off. All right, so I've got that strap off now. And so what I've decided to do is cut another little scrap here from my fabric and I'm going to want it to end right about here, okay? So actually, I'm going to turn it upright this way and stitch it right across here. Can you even see that? I'm going to stitch it right across here at about a quarter inch. And then when it folds back, it should be in the right position, okay? So let me go ahead and pin that back where it needs to be here. Go back to Yolanda. Oh, this is so thick. Go back over to Yolanda and stitch it right there. Okay, I think that looks a whole lot better, both on this side and on that side. 
pulled off my little square stitching there that'll disappear after a while and I just have one little row of stitching view in view right there so yeah happy with this happy with this now the only other thing that I'm not terribly pleased about is that this strap then I have on backwards um, and it's made so that it's going to clip on to one of these little rings here I don't really want to pull it out from here the way that this is made. The little vinyl turns around itself in there so both the layers come together. I don't know if I'm explaining that right but basically I can't just cut this and re-sew it. Or maybe I can. It would be invisible anyway, right? Okay, hang on a second. If I slice this open right here all right and pull everything off so I've got those and this okay so now I want to put this back on so it is visible on this side okay so that looks a lot better all right, so let me slide this on here. Now the tricky part is going to be that with all of this on here, I'm going to need to wrap this around and somehow reattach it around the little center part here. So give me a minute to try to maneuver all of this stuff and I'll come up with a game plan. All right, so what I had to do is trim this side back. You can see I took out the stitching for about half an inch or more here to trim that back down. So I've got all of this on and now I'm gonna loop my single layered part here around that center thing. I'm sure there's a technical name for that center thing, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so now since I have more room here, this is all the way down, and I think, not sure, but I think I'll be able to get that under my machine just to stitch it really quickly, and that should not even be visible from the outside, at least I hope not. Um, I'm also thinking a glue would work really well right here. Maybe throw a little E6000 on there. Which honestly sounds like a really good idea right now. Um, but no, I'm going to go ahead and try to sew it. Okay, so got that stitched. And now I can just go ahead and clip it on here. My buckle is on the right way and I should still be able to adjust it to a height that I want. Oh, come on now. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to set this piece aside for right now and we're going to get started working on the lining, which should be a lot easier than the outside piece. Now on the instructions, they just say follow construction for the bag step two. Okay, so one of the big things is I need to make sure that I have the zipper line marked on both of these because that from what I can tell is the only zipper. All of the pockets and everything we're not dealing with here. So um, yeah, let me go ahead and work on transferring the markings. Okay, so with these marks, so I got my zipper, the center little square, the other zipper there, the two dots on the bottom marked on this one. And on this one, I've got the line around the cutout at the top and the two little dots on either side of the bottom. I'm going to go ahead just like before and run a row of stitching along here, here, and down each of these zipper locations just for reinforcement using a fairly small stitch. To show you, I read the instruction wrong. I'm looking back here 
and they did only show to clip that center part. So I just misread it and thought, okay, I'm going to clip all of the ones that have a solid line stitching at the top edge. No, they only actually gave you the close-up of the center one, so I just interpreted it that that meant these also. So, you know, it was a little unclear, so will give us both the benefit of the doubt, but, you know, no one get mad at me and say, well, they told you, you know, because we are human. Anyway, this is my back piece here. I am folding it in half, and I'm going to stitch straight across here at a half inch seam allowance. But, actually, what I forgot to do just now is before I do that, I need to clip up to these corners. I just reinforce with my stitching. Okay, so now, now I'm going to go back and just sew straight across up here at a half inch. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just kind of pushing that seam allowance open with my fingers and flattening it out. And now I'm just going to sew straight across here, just over where that other stitching line is, um, right here. Okay, so after stitching that, if I was to turn it right side out, that's what that side's going to look like. So that is all good. Now I need to work on this back piece here. And the first thing I'm going to do is clip the center part, and only the center part, like so. And fold these two sides together. I need to really make sure that I have these lines here matched up well. So I'm going to stick a pin right in the middle. I can tell you that sewing this lining, you know, this interface lining, is so much easier than working on that velory, velvety, bonded stuff. Mm. So anyway, now that I have this done, I'm going to stitch it from this line here, you know, not going in there from this line here um, over to the edge at a half inch seam allowance. Okay, and once again, I'm just kind of opening up this seam allowance with my fingers, running my thumbnail over it to kind of press it open for me, okay? So this is what it looks like on the inside, and thankfully these lines are lining up. I'm not going to cut it open yet because I'm going to be stitching these two together. So let me see the best way to do this. I think I'm going to set this little one inside of the big one here. I need to match up the top seam. It was actually easier to do this, I think, when this was cut. Just, so, just saying. So now that I have the bottom and the top center matched up, then I'll just go ahead and match this up. Do the same thing over on this side. And then I'm going to sew the whole thing at a half inch seam allowance, starting at this lower dot, going up all the way over, and coming back and ending at this lower dot. So I stitched the whole thing, and I just glanced over here and noticed that they wanted you to leave several inches open on the side here to be able to turn it inside out or right side out. So since I've already stitched it all the way around, I'm just going to leave my opening on the bottom. It should work the same. So just like on the other side, on the green side, I had to clip at that bottom dot. I've gone ahead and clipped it and I'm going to pin it and I'm going to stitch all the way around to the corner. Um, till about there on both sides and that's going to leave me an opening of about four inches or so. I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to be sewing it with this side up this time and so I'm going to make a few little clips on the front side here around this curved corner just so that that's going to flex enough that I can get a nice straight stitch going through here. Okay, just wanted to show you that. But once I get it on the straightaway, I'm going to put a little mark with my pen so I don't forget, and I'm going to stop it right there. Okay, let me put one more clip here because that's binding up a bit. Okay.
Okay, so I've got it to this point where I have this little bit open in the bottom, you know, and I'm leaving the whole thing inside out for right now and just setting it aside because it's finally time to put a zipper on here. So we have arrived to the step which says slash that big zipper opening. So we are way ahead of them. Look at that. So I'm going to skip over to the next step which is using a zipper foot put in your zipper. So like always I'm going to be using my tape, my double-sided water-soluble basting tape and I think I mentioned before I'm what they want you to do is use two separate zippers and have them come together and meet here. I didn't have two that were the right size that matched, but I had a whole bunch of long ones. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm just going to be putting in one long zipper, you know, on the whole thing. I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to put it so that when my zipper is closed, the little tab is over here on the same side with the pocket. I think I can remember that pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and put my tape on both sides of my zipper on the right side. So I'm looking at the little tab here. It's a standard zipper. I'm going to go ahead and apply it to both sides and putting my tape uh, fairly close to the outside edge over here. So I have more of a gap in the middle. You can see like that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do that on both sides. Okay, we're going to be putting this zipper on a little bit different. And, uh-oh, I think my zipper's broken. Hang on a second. No. All right. Well, i got to go grab a different zipper because I just noticed that the teeth are shot here. Wait a second. Maybe I can pop it back in. Oh, okay, it's good. I think that where it was folded in the package, they had popped out of alignment, but we're good now. Let me just tug on it a few times to make sure that that was not a fluke. And it looks like we're good. Okay, so what I did is I put a mark at the halfway point, just folded the ends together, you know, put a mark there, and that's what I'm going to line up with my center seams here. So with my zipper face down it's going to be applied this way all right so this is the side that i'm going to pull the paper off first i need to get that stuck back on there okay so let me go ahead and get the paper backing pulled off and of this side of my zipper and i'm working with the side with my little hook on it i'm just going to line up where that center line is in the very edge of my cut fabric with the line that I drew on my zipper there. Okay, and then work my way to the front, lining up the edge of my zipper with the edge of the cut part of my green fabric. All the way to the front. Okay, and we have these clipped so that it opens easily here. And let me do the same thing towards the back here. Okay, looks like it's going to fit really well. All right, so now what I need to do is uh, go over to my machine and with a zipper foot or narrow foot or something, go ahead and stitch this on right here. You know, a decent a decent amount away from the zipper, probably right along this guideline right here. So I have at least an eighth of an inch from the zipper. You know, I think that that will look fine. And I got that one stitched, you know, not perfectly straight. Unfortunately, I was using a foot that was not set right. So I got a little bit wonky, but you know what? It's gonna look fine from the outside. It will work fine, so I'm not stressing about it. You know, this is the first time using a pattern. That's when you troubleshoot things. So, yeah. Anyhow, I had to change, um, churn my whole bag inside out before I can start to work on this side over here. Okay, so turn it inside out. Tuck your straps and everything in. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull my paper backing off of this side.
And just like before, I am going to match up the center line I drew with the seam over here on this side, okay? So let me open it up so I can see where those two match right to there. And then just like before, okay, you have to get a little bit, you know, creative how you hold it. But just easing it my all the way down, pressing the tape to the cut edge here. Like that. I couldn't imagine doing this without the zipper tape, honestly. Do yourself a favor, if you don't own any, go ahead and get some just to have on hand. It's, it's worth the money. Okay, so at the bottom I have that little triangle sticking out and this is all open. I'm gonna press the other side on just like this and then when I go to sew it, I'll start over here and come up and around all the way to the end and just go straight off. I'm not crossing over at all. So doing it the way I'm doing it with just one zipper instead of two. Um, one of the tricky things is being able to sew the entire zipper on without getting yourself locked out. And what I mean is, um, when I had it closed all the way, how are you going to open that again, you know? So what I had to do is kind of feel for where the little end is outside, grab it, pull it back about an inch, and then I could reach my thumb in and unzip it. So, you know, just be careful that way. But I'm going to go ahead and flip this right side out just to see what it looks like at this point. Okay, so if I zip it up here, over, get these ends tucked inside as they should be. Well, that's not bad, you know, that's looking pretty good. I'm good with that. And I'm using a 20 inch zipper, I believe it is. No, 18, an 18 inch zipper, because they wanted two nine, nine inches, so I got one 18 inch, and it is fitting exact. So, you know, that worked for me, maybe it'll work for you. So what I need to do now is flip this inside out again so that I can put my lining on it. So, let me get this flipped inside out, and on my lining here, oh, it's finally time on this part to go ahead and cut the zipper opening. So I'm just going to cut one layer at a time. If I can get my tip of my scissors in there. Okay. And cut it straight down the middle. And when I get about a quarter inch away from the bottom, stop and then just cut two angles to the corner dots. Okay, I'm gonna do that on the other side here also. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it right side out here. Get my little corners poked out the best I can. And up here. This still has not been sewed straight across, but I guess we're just not worrying about that. Okay, I got it stitched across there, feeling better. They must have addressed it somewhere that I just missed. Um, I just didn't see it. You know, it's it's got to be on there somewhere. Anyhow, let me go ahead and get this poked out like that, and now we're going to layer the zipper in here. So, mm, how in the world do I do this? I need to have the wrong sides visible on both sides here. So let me tuck this strap back in, raise you up out of the way. Okay, and now I need to get uh, this piece. All right, I think it matches up this way, so I'm going to shove the lining inside this way. 
and with my center seam up here match that up to the center seam at the top here and I need my clips again all right so I got it clipped right there I'm going to go ahead and clip this center over here just to keep it where it needs to be so the center seam over here matching up with this one and clip it okay so we have our mouth here now I'm just going to do one side at a time I'm going to be doing this side that has the big strap attached to it I believe that is the front side I believe um, just attaching it all the way down here and where it's open at the bottom my tape just kind of extends beyond that I'm going to layer my lining so that the fabric of my lining ends at the same place here and try to make sure that everything in between works together here and then I'll be sewing this side first and then I'll come back and sew and match up and sew the lining onto this side over here okay but once I get this side matched up like this go to the machine still with the zipper foot on it and stitch this side okay, while I was over at the machine I went ahead and matched up and sewed this side also in the exact same way I still don't have these bottoms you know stitched across there I'm hoping they just take care of themselves um, it's tricky getting right in here you know just let you know that's kind of tricky so now I need to flip this whole thing right side out so that little opening that I left at the bottom here I'm gonna need to pull everything through here and that seems like a very small opening for all of that so I may have to open up a few more stitches you know to pull everything through it's kind of like you know giving birth here or something so give me a few minutes I'm just gonna take my time and try to smush it all through that opening and I will be back shortly I finally got it pulled it was, I had to pop open probably about another inch worth of stitches here so I'm going to go ahead and get this matched up and just whip stitch it closed down here at the bottom and I decided I was not in the mood to whip stitch so I just ran a little row of zigzag stitch across the bottom you know it kind of blends so I can stick it back in down here and see what to do about finishing off these zippers I don't like how it's just kind of left raw there so what I'm thinking of doing is just carefully by hand tucking those little triangles in here and then putting a couple little stitches across the bottom if I can keep everything tucked in here just with a needle and thread pull some stitches across the bottom here just to keep all of that tucked in so that the ends of the tapes and those little triangles don't want to peek back out again so I've got it all made and you can see I have a very large water bottle I think that it is 67 ounces you know which may seem like overkill but it's great for those days when you're going to be out for quite some time um, it does fit in barely I think that the handle makes it a little tight but that's okay it does fit so all in all 
I think that it will be good for this water bottle. I am not a huge fan of the pockets just for the reason that they seem to be too small for me to throw my phone into and um, I can put it in the side, you know. I have basically this as primarily a water bottle carrier with a, you know, probably a few cards or keys and nothing more. Not a primary purse, but it is cute, you know. I think if you made it out of a specialty fabric that you really loved, it would be cute. I am not a huge fan of the thickness of the fabric I made it out of just because some of those places there were so many layers that I had to get my my powerful machine to do it well you know which isn't a big deal it just is what it is um, I think if I was to do it again I would probably use a thinner still very strong but a thinner um, home deck fabric you know like I have used periodically but that is about it with my modifications I think it's cute I think it's workable a little confusing at times but it all turned out good so I hope you liked it see you next time bye bye mm -hmm. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sell and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living. My bucolic life